Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Small Business Chronicles. We have become your Swiss army knife for business. As you know, uh, tune into this show. You're going to find out everything you need to know, whether it be from how to network, networking, uh, um, technical stuff, marketing, uh, emotional intelligence, and how that plays into business. Uh, But I want to continue on today with podcasting. Uh, Of course, this is the medium in which I speak to you, whether it be through video or audio, it's still going to be a version of podcasting. Now, I've been podcasting off and on for uh, going on like 12 or 13 years now. It started with a little two channel thing that I got at Radio Shack on the bottom of a cow tub out in a barn. Like that's where that that started there. And now I'm here with uh, Alex Sanfilippo. Did I get that right? Sure Uh, did. Okay, founder and CEO of Podmatch, which is a which is a Podmatch service, which matches up hosts and guests. And I'm very honored to have you here, Alex. How are we doing today? Uh, Ryan, I'm doing great, and honored to be here with somebody who's been podcasting longer than me. 2010 <laughs> is when you started. I think I was 2014 yeah. or 16. So pretty cool to be here with another 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 podcasting person, right? Like we're through and through podcasters at this point. So. Right. And I feel, I feel more like on the coach side of things because as, as, as I've been on the mic and I do this, we work with several hosts here, what I do. And, and that's what I do. That's what I get joy out of, of te- teaching people how to do this and coaches don't play. Right. And I'm, I'm breaking that rule by playing, but, uh, podcasting has changed my life in many different ways and it kind of has yours as well. Oh yeah, for sure. When, when I first got into it, I'll be real, uh, Ryan. My first one was like a total failed attempt. I think I did like 12 episodes and it was just like not good. I was recording in my car, but I left the car on off of the side of a busy road. Like I think I was doing it like while I was at a nine to five job and just was like, oh, I'll just sit here and, and, and do this. Right. It was it sounded awful and the content was just as bad. But that was my introduction <laughs> to it. But yes, past that one, uh, I got serious just a couple of years later. And yes, podcasting has like totally changed my life my ability to speak, my ability to communicate and to network and meet cool people like you. Like I get this opportunity without this, this microphone being in front of me and camera, this wouldn't be happening. Uh, You bring up networking, which is one of, I I get really excited about talking about networking opportunities in podcasts because everybody thinks of, I think like Joe Rogan or the political podcasts or whatever that have millions of followers and stuff. My little podcast has a few hundred and we're getting going uh, and doing all that. But one of the things that I have done with this podcast is met people that I never, ever would in my entire life. And and to bring that into a business set to, to what we're doing in business and how we're succeeding in that, uh, we, we kind of got stagnant. And then we're like, well, let's try podcasting. It's that old bag, you know? And then all of a sudden we start and it starts, business starts opening up again. Things starts happening again. Things start happening again. D- just for setting across from people like me and you. Man, it, I love that my podcast, like if I go back in my journey, I've had some pretty good successes with the size of my shows and stuff like that, which I'm super thankful for. But really, the, the value, the power has been in the connections I make with somebody else on the other side of the mic. And the way I like to put it is this is, in my mind, one of the best ways to have a meaningful experience with somebody you don't know. And that meaningful experience is the baseline of all friendship. Like if, if we think back in our lives, like if you ever did like a kayaking adventure, whitewater rafting or skiing, snowboarding, any of that stuff, right? If any of that comes to your mind that you've done, you typically don't forget who you did that with. And I find that no. an interview between a guest and a host, unless, of course, your guest has been on thousands of interviews, right? They come from TV or something like they'll just, they don't even remember the conversation when it's done. But for most of us, myself included in this, I've not done enough of this for this not to be a meaningful experience. If I run into you at a conference, I'll be like, Ryan, Small Business Chronicles, you had me on your podcast, what? Right, like you'll remember that experience. I think that that really can be the power of it. And here's the thing, I don't wanna delude the fact that we're adding value to people that are hearing us talk today. So the meaningful experience is the fact that we both know we're showing up to serve somebody that's going to get something out of the content. And like, what can be better than that? Showing up, meeting somebody, having that fun, meaningful experience while also serving somebody who, who needs to hear the message that you're both sharing. You know, I, I think anybody that that has made it to where we are, and neither one of us are overly successful, but we are we were experiencing success in our veins, want to pass that down. We, we've got our hand reached out going, come on, let's do this. I want to see other people do because I've not felt as exhilarated or as live when you take that next step in business and you take that next step in doing. And everybody has their little things. Like if I need financial help, I'm going to go to a financial planner. If I need help with my swing, I'm going to go to a baseball coach. And, and, and podcasting is a way to reach out to those people and, and segment down. I feel like, 
I, I feel like when you add value, podcasting is taking the place of magazines. I'm, I'm going to make that because Newsweek has lost all reputability. It's pretty much clickbait at this point. I don't know when the last time I actually read a meaningful Rolling Stones ar uh, article or whatever, because we would get those. We would get woodworking magazines or car magazines or business magazines because we wanted to hear from experts and we wanted to see what they had to say. The evolution has been podcasting has taken over what magazines used to be to where if you have a niche, if you have a subject, if you have something specific you want to talk about, you can just Google that. You can go to Apple or Spotify or or whatever you want to do and find somebody willing to speak about that in a very structured manner, kind of like a magazine. Yeah, you know, actually, it's funny going back to the, the seat of guests to host, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it takes a little bit of trust as well before. So like before we hit record, Ryan, you and I both shared our podcasting journey a little bit, just so we yeah. have some context. And I find yeah. that the better, the better conversations, not even interviews happen when there's a little bit that happens beforehand, right? It's not just jump right on. And I've been on some interviews where literally it's already recording. I jump in like, welcome to the show, Alex. I'm like, man, I, I know this person's name. I listen to the show. I always do my due diligence, but I'm like, I don't know how much they know about me. We don't even like, don't really know each other. It's just kind of like, you just get thrown into it. And so like that green room, I have a, a, a close friend who lives here in Jacksonville, Florida. His name's Pablo Gonzalez. And Pablo says, uh, podcast interviews are the new golf. He's like, it's that level of networking. Like, and it's that mm -hmm. green room specifically that's just so powerful. And yes, I agree that like going to your magazine example, that's what this is. It's a conversation between two people that are structured. It has, there's a plan for where it's going to go, right? Typically a good podcaster doesn't just be random. Be like, so you mentioned golf. Do you like golf? Oh no. Okay. Do you like serving? Right? Like it's not that random. It has some sort of direction you want it to go in. And that's what really makes it valuable for that person who's listening to it. It's that we're not just rambling about all randomness. No, it's, Hey, you know what? They're going to talk about this and I'll, I'll give a great example of this and I'll, and then I'll be quiet here, Ryan. Uh, you recently no, had an episode. It was actually Monday. Let's see. It was, I think it came out on, well, for sake of evergreen, it came out on September 18th, 2023. It's called mastering the art or mastering time management. Sorry. With Pete Moore. And yes, something yes. Pete said, like such a valuable conversation, like the whole thing was directed around this idea of time management, which is a small business owner. That's tends to be the big struggle. Right. And one of the things that, um, that, uh, Pete said in it, and I, I want to call this out cause it was so valuable. Uh, you control your time as a business owner, but we forget to build in time to have a little bit of life and to do something right. that's fun, not to just work ourselves to death. And that's kind of where I've been at. I'm like, man. I don't really build in the free time. I build in the work time and then just let it overflow into everything. But like, again, to your point, that's better than any magazine article I've ever right. read about time management. Like it was like, man, this is a conversation between two guys that have like gone the path. They're figuring it out. And I feel like I just got to enter this. And that to me, once again, that is such a powerful thing. And by the way, great interview with Pete. That was incredible. I recommend everyone go back and listen to that. Man, and I'll put it in the show notes. Uh, but yeah, Pete was amazing. I, I did several people, uh, had several people come on talking about different work life balance, uh, stuff like that. A lot of these business podcasts, they, they cover the structures, the, the brass tacks, the nine to five, how to make the money. But if you're not enjoying making that money, what's it really worth? You know, you can have a right. bank account full of money and die of a heart attack at 45 because you never stopped working. Um, the, the, having a small business is one of those things that is a commitment, just like a child or just like a, a, a pet. Not that they're the same thing. Please don't call me. That. I don't know. I've seen some Watch out, Ryan. Kids. I need to keep a comedy know. background. I don't know what we're about to get from here. But. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I've, I've seen some that we could make the comparison. But anyway, uh, but but it, it's such an investment to you and your family and, and whatever that family looks like uh, that, that you have to know how to shut that off at some point. You have to know how to relax. And, and that's what I want uh, podcasting is talking value. We were talking value is that when you leave my show, when we leave your show, that, that you need to leave people with something. That, that would, that's one of the absolute staples of if you're going to do a show, if you're going to be a podcaster, is you got to find your value, your value point. Um, uh, that, that was one of the big things that helped. Uh, a few weeks ago, I interviewed uh, Laura McMahon, uh, from uh, All Ears English and uh, Lindsay. Sorry, did I? I got her name wrong. I'm so sorry, Lindsay. And I, <laughs> I was like, I was like, hold on. Yeah. I think I know who you're talking no, no, about. No, no, yeah. no, no, Lind she Lindsay McMahon from All Ears English. Uh, she's really popular. She ain't gonna listen to this. I'm sorry if you do. Uh, <laughs> she's but, great in, in podcasting, by the way. So kudos oh. to you for having a, an amazing guest on like yeah. that. 
uh, Allers English, and she she's the one that told me weeks ago when I was interviewing her, which will be released along with yours, is you have to have that value added. You have to know why you're sitting in front of this microphone and talking. You have to know what you're offering uh, in, in that podcast, because otherwise... It's just uh, somebody babbling into a microphone. And if you've ever tried to, if you've listened to people uh, at a restaurant and they're talking over a table, that's what you're giving them. And and where that's fun in a restaurant, you're you're not adding value, and you're not going to get that listener, and you're not you're not going to get the next listener and the next listener, and you're not going to find that value added because it's not just about listeners; it's about the networking and the listeners. But if you nail it on air, you'll grow both exponentially. Oh, yeah. You, this is the biggest point I tell people before they get into podcasting. People all the time, they meet me and they find I'm a podcast. They're like, oh, I've been wanting to start one. I'm like, cool, what do you want it to be about? I'm not really sure yet. I'm like, cool, figure that out first. And they're like, oh, well, I kind of <laughs> thought I'd just give it, like, get into it and start growing it. And then I kind of figure out as I go along. I'm like, it, it just never works. It's like starting a business saying, we don't know what we're going to sell yet. We're just going to start the business and figure out as we go along. Like, yeah, it's very similar to that. And it's like if you're, you're starting a business with no product, no service and no idea other than the fact that we're just going to start it and we'll see where it goes. That's never going to succeed or go anywhere. And, and podcasting is the same thing. You've got to have a plan and a direction for it built upon the value that you're adding to the person that you're saying I'm going to serve. And nothing beats that. And, and knowing that is what makes it valuable. It makes it, it's what makes it a valuable extension to your business even. It's how you really can build something that will truly serve people and make a difference. Uh, and absolutely. And if you, one of the things I want to tell people, if you're thinking about doing a podcast, that's kind of the, the, the theory of the show is what do you need to know as you get into it is that that if you're investing time, money and, and, and experience into this, you're the expert in your field. It's, it's really hard because you, you, you mentioned the comedic background. Um, it was really hard to switch from comedy to where everything I said on stage was taken with a grain of salt to being an expert and, and, and there being an factually wrong things that I could say. I remember uh, um, I did a webinar for Big Eye Insurance, like the national Big Eye Insurance. And I remember that they let me record it. And I spent four days recording like a 20 minute thing because... I kept getting in my head. I'm like, is this right? I would go Google, is this right about insurance marketing? Is this right? Is this correct? I'd call, I'd call people that had more than me, and I forgot that I was the expert. If you step in front of the mic and you don't feel like you're the expert, everybody's going to understand you're not the expert. A lot of that goes into imposter syndrome. I think that's yes. what that goes into. Like just feeling like like you, your background, which by the way, anyone who does anything in comedy, I have so much respect <laughs> for. Like there is no chance I get in front of like an open mic. Like it's just not going to happen. Um, so nothing but respect from that side. Uh, but yeah, you felt like that almost, although it really did add credibility, it felt like maybe it discredited because you were like, okay, what if I do this? Or what if I say that wrong? That's it. It's an intimidating thing. And I, I think that a lot of people, you, you need to know that if you're one step further than somebody else, you can help them. And I think that yes. that's the thing. Like I have a small business, but I can still give business advice and I can of still course. consider myself a business expert. Sure, I'm not Jeff Bezos or uh, Elon Musk or any, or any of these people that have built multi-billion dollar dynasties, if you will, right? Like that's not me, but I still have something to add. And that imposter syndrome is tells us like, ooh, can you really though? Like you're not the best at this. But again, if we're one step further and we know we can help somebody go from where they are to that next step they want to be in, we can really help and we can serve. And, and it takes a level of, of just really humility and self-discipline to allow yourself to, to step into that. And, and it can be difficult, but I think it's really great going to, to just taking it straight to small business owners. It is so healthy for small business owners to step into this and put it into practice because mm -hmm. it gets easier the more you do. I won't say that like that ever fully goes away. Uh, I had somebody no. recently tell me, Ryan, they're like, they're like, hey, something you said changed my life. And I immediately was like, oh, no, I hope it was the right thing. Like, that's what I, my inside <laughs> told me. I'm like, I hope it was the right thing. You know, but like, that's how I felt in that moment. I was like, no, you know what, Alex? Like, just stay true to the process. I'm getting better. I'm getting more confident. I'm just going to keep on doing this. And that right there has helped my business a lot because I can talk about it, most of it, I should say, with extreme confidence and knowing that I am sharing the right thing because I've seen that become the trail and path for people. No, and 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 I, I thousand percent agree with you. And I think one of the things that we do is a little bit of hero worship because you mentioned like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, those people. 
it, it's kind of like watching it, it's and I'm going to date myself here. It's kind of like watching Emmett Smith run and then going outside and 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 thinking, hey, I can do that, too. There's a reason that they're that high level in business. And, and one of the value added things I feel with podcasting is you get people that are just a step or two beyond you because we need that. If you ask Jeff Bezos for advice, he's like, well, if you run out of heating oil, you can burn hundred dollar bills and stay warm. Like how, <laughs> how, how like, like that would be somebody like his advice to you. Right. But, but then if you ask me, I'm going to be like, Hey, you, you don't need Netflix and Hulu pick one. Like, like that's right. going to be the difference of advice between Jeff Bezos and me. Now I, I've had successes in business, but I'm not, you know, burning hundred dollar bills to stay warm like Looney Tunes cartoons. And, and that's something he could literally do. I, be, I believe that, that that is just so key right there. And, and I think it's actually the future of how people like to learn. It, mm -hmm. Here's the thing, though. If I can go back to that analogy of grabbing somebody's hand and pulling up to where you are, right? Like imagine yeah. we're climbing a mountain and there's a big boulder between you and me. And I, I know the thing that can get you up there. So I pull, I put my hand down, you grab my hand, I pull you up to where I am. That was helpful to you. Now imagine one of the, not, not talking bad about like these big names and stuff, but they, they are, they're mm -hmm. at the top of this mountain already. And instead they're yelling down at you, Ryan, Try going this way and then go over that way and then you can get around it. Which is the better, more helpful advice in that moment? It's the person who's grabbing you, pulling up to where, where you are, where they are and saying, you know what? Cool. Keep on going on your journey. You'll find somebody else that will help you on that next step. I believe that people have come around to this form of education, that, that this is what's actually more helpful than just going straight to the top where, again, not talking bad about them. They're for somebody. There's somebody who's just a step below them as well. Yeah. But they're so far removed that the things that they say are – it just it freaks us out, right? Like, because some of these people yeah. are like, "Hey, just go raise a hundred million dollars. You'll be fine. Figure yeah. it out, right?" I do that every week, and you, to us, we're like, "No, I, I don't want to raise a hundred million dollars of somebody else's money. Like, I'm not ready for that." And someone's gonna be like, "Hey, like you said, just cancel one of these subscriptions and stop getting Starbucks coffee every yeah. other day, right? Like, you'll right. save a little bit more money. Your margin will then be bigger. Uh, yeah. Things like that. I, I think that's the future of of what we're seeing in education and podcasting is providing a front line to that." Oh, of course. And and don't get me wrong, it, not getting that subscription, buying that coffee is not going to buy you a house. That's a, that's a misnomer. It's not giving up your avocado toast is not going to get you a down payment. But when you're working in small margins of small business, some of those things are some of those things can, can add up. Some of those things can be costly. Like, like, and, and, and you get to a point through small business of, man, I'm, I'm sacrificing everything. I don't have any money. And then, so, uh, yesterday my wife, there's doing construction at her job, uh, uh, run over a wire and flatten two of her left tires. Right. Just that, that's a thing that happened. Right. Um, and I'm sure everybody can associate with that. And I just felt lucky that I can be like, yeah, I called a buddy, had him go fix it. Uh, tires are on there and it's good to go. But but Jeff Bezos level stuff would have been like, ah, oh, we'll just buy the place and sue them or we'll just buy the place and move the <laughs> wire. You know, so yeah, being able to niche down, I think there's a high end, high end of people coming out in the workforce today that are from YouTube University as well. Um uh, of of I, I mentioned in the pre-interview, uh, I used to make video game assets. I, I downloaded uh, I downloaded a program called Blender because I was I was interested in animation, and it's got 3D animation in it and 2D animation. And I'm like, I, I just want to kind of mess around with this. And then I ended up uh, I, I ended up doing assets. I ended up doing video game assets and stuff like that. But at the time I was like, man, I don't know how to use this. There's a 6 million buttons. You could spend six years and never learn this stuff, but I could literally just dual monitor it and pull up somebody on YouTube that knew just a little bit more than me and learn where that button was at, learn where that process was at, learn how that thing happened and learn how that went. And then I get to the next process and boom. And then sooner or later I'm making money out of it. And you're getting, seeing people in this day and age and I'm going to admit something right now. So I started setting up all this tech stuff in the background for the company of doing live streams from chambers and, and mobile podcast units and all this other stuff to help grow my business, right? You know how many like 20-year-old kids I watched on YouTube and streamers and looked up how do they stream? How do they do this? How do they do whatever? So it doesn't matter age. It doesn't matter location. It's a tech skill. And just having access to YouTube and podcasting and stuff to to expand that next set of tech skills is is starting to invalidate some of the education people are coming out with. Now, granted, theirs is more structured, but but you can't dismiss that YouTube college generation either. 
this, I'll give a great example of this. And this goes back to imposter syndrome. If you're like, this sounds great. My business could use a podcast, right? Like if that's you saying that, like yeah. it's done wonders for my business. If someone listening is saying, that's me, but that imposter syndrome still. Yeah. Ryan just mentioned some young kids, right? I'll mention one right. even younger. I was trying to figure out how to transfer my YouTube channel from one Google account to another. And I thought it was gonna be an easy task, but I couldn't figure it out. No. Their help is like super outdated. So I went mm -hmm. to YouTube and I found a few really big name people that explained it and it didn't work. There's like three in a row. And then I found like a random, I scrolled really far. I found a random one. This girl that I was listening to had to be 12 years old. And she was yeah. the only one who explained it correctly because everyone left out one little detail, which was, yeah. she just said, she goes, oh, and by the way, they don't tell you this, but it'll take seven days for it to transfer. And you won't know when it's done. You just have to set a reminder in your calendar. And no one else said that. I'm like, oh, so I'm actually done. I just haven't waited seven days. So yeah. I like left her a comment, subscribed to her channel. She's probably 12. So if you're feeling yeah. like an imposter, just remember, you your voice might be the only one that actually resonates with somebody. They could hear it a hundred other times, but you might be the one with that little detail that you share that maybe everyone else is like, ah, whatever, no one cares about that. But it might be the one thing somebody needs. Don't let imposter syndrome stop you. I'm telling you, there is no. something here for all of us. And 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 as as the last thing that I kind of want to talk about when it comes to podcasting and and your own is it, the there is a certain amount that you need to be realistic workload that goes into a podcast um because we've kind of covered it you know it, we've covered that it's a good networking thing we've covered how you can niche down you can be part of a community you can grow your business not only between the pre-interview post-interview but gaining followership and viewership adding the value to things but there is some work that goes behind a podcast. Uh, that that's a hundred percent. It's it's you don't look like like look at Alex. His setup, it's all crisp and clean, and 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 got a good microphone. Um, and, and I'm not I'm not paid by them, but you can get microphones for podcasts for a hundred bucks. So so your setup cost is, is minimal into there. And surprisingly enough, if you're just wanting to get practice in uh, an earline uh, iPod microphone, it is good enough for an audio podcast. Um, and, and a little touch up, but there's a certain amount of work of how much you want to edit, how much you want to do, how much you want to put out there. What have you found, Alex, or some of those time savers or some of those realistic things that people need to think about as they move into podcasting? Ryan, first off, there's no one size fits all. Like that's no. the very first thing. Like it, some people immediately, like I've talked to companies that, that want to launch. It was a recent one here in my city that they're a big real estate firm and they, they just, they're like, it has to be the best of the best, the top of the top. Yeah. And they're like, we're willing to spend $35,000 on a studio. I'm like, you haven't even done a single episode. Like, what if you hate it? I'm like, go to a studio if you don't even want the gear. Right. But like, yeah. don't spend 35 grand up front for something that you don't even know if you're going to even enjoy it or want to stick with it. Cause it is work. It takes work. Right. So like on the gear side of things, I always say like, work your way up start with what you have. I mean, I don't recommend doing what I did at first as I shared, which was sitting in my car next to traffic with the AC running, speaking into my phone with not even wearing like headphones, right? Like <laughs> don't do that. But at the end of the day, like make a small investment, try spending a hundred dollars yeah. on a mic, see if you enjoy it, work your way up. As a matter of fact, I find that people like to see the journey. When you appear as if you're on year 20 on day one, that intimidates everybody. Right. Yeah. If you can show, hey, just start this thing off here to serve, here to add value. We invest in this mic. We have no idea what we're doing, but here we go. Right. Like somebody's going to resonate with that. Be like, oh, man, this is a human talking to me. So I always right. tell people like on the, the investment of gear, like tech, hardware, software, there's a lot of stuff that exists that makes it really easy. and You don't have to spend a lot of money, but work your way up. I mean, for a long time, I was using just a, a standard like $80 mic. And I was just yeah. sitting in my living room is where I was sitting. And now I have this is a home office that I have built out into my what I call my forever gear. But this is multiple mics in, multiple cameras in, right? Like I've just worked my way to it over time. And so, yeah, the, the software and hardware is pretty easy to find these days. Like there's, I don't even want to mention specifics because it changes all the time, but there is so much there that can really help and make it great. I will say this, if you have a budget for it, um, Ryan and Titan Digital hiring these guys to like run it for you. If you're saying, hey, this isn't going to be my main thing goes a long way. I always say, keep the main thing, the main thing. And so I tell people like, Hey, if you're busy running a business, but you think that this would be a good top of funnel marketing for you, a way to build relationships, great. But don't decide you need to hire a whole podcast team. Sub that out. Do the recordings the way they tell you to do it, using the gear they tell you to use, and pass it off to them when you're done. That is a very, very good business model for podcasting that works alongside small businesses that don't have the extra capacity or the know how to do it. It makes it really, really simple. And I, I encourage people that have a business where podcasting isn't the main thing to actually do it that way. 
Uh, of course. So I, I'm going to dissect everything you said, and I want to start Please. at the first. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm way invested in this conversation at this point. Um, that I always tell people, if you start with this podcast and work yourself backwards uh, through my podcast, you'll, you'll watch me become a very bad podcaster. Right. Because <laughs> good. It, it, it depends on which direction you listen to the shows, because even so I took like a six year break from podcasting and came back for this. So if you go back to episode one, the lighting's bad. I'm on a cheap microphone. It's echoey. It, it's not great. It, it, it's, it's absolutely not great. But then when you look at today that I got a set behind me and I'm on a decent microphone, by the way, I don't get paid by these people. It's called Fee Fine, F I F I N E, uh, $80 microphone. If you like the way I sound, this is not a product plug. I get nothing for this. But uh, this is what we recommend uh, when we get hook up new podcasters or what. It's 80 bucks on Amazon, and that comes with the arm. Um, so, as far as your investment, uh, I will mention one OBS Studio. Uh, is a free shareware between OBS and and YouTube. You can you you can start producing podcasts uh, that look a little bit better than Starter, but don't worry about if you're Starter. But th th between YouTube and OBS, you can get enough knowledge to and an eighty dollar investment in a microphone and a computer. You 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 can start sounding. You you can start sounding well uh, as you get up. As far as mentioning what we do, we've, we've seen that in a lot of success. And this is not a plug. I'm not trying to plug what we're doing here at Titan Media. But what we do is you're exactly right. There, there's, it, you're, We always tell people in marketing, because I'm a marketing guy, is your job is to do the thing. If you're a real estate agent, your job is to sell a house. If you're a baker, your job is to make cakes. You don't need to go become an expert in marketing. You don't need to spend all the time, money, and effort to come into marketing. And we feel that podcasting was such a force after we started doing it. We just started doing it as, as I was director of uh, internal marketing. And I thought, you know what? It'd be cool to get a couple people on here and do that. But as we started doing podcasts, we found so many business owners that wanted to do it and couldn't have the time commitment. And to see them grow and flourish through, through uh, taking away that imposter syndrome, taking away that over element of, of what does the back end production look like or how do I run the tech of it or whatever. And to see them hop into it has just been an amazing process. Yeah, I love that, man. I think it's it's just such a powerful thing to be able to like to to work with a team, but also like again, going back to the idea of podcasting. Right now, listenership, I can just talk about podcasting in general for a minute, if that's okay, Ryan. Yeah. Um we're seeing listenership climb at an exponential rate. That means people who are listening yes. to podcasts and, and everyone I know is in podcasting is like, man, my podcast is growing. I'm not even really sure why. I'm like, because there's right. more people coming into the medium that are listening, that are saying, Wow, I I need to hear something, right? And all of the search engines uh, and i i don't just mean like the googles of the world i mean apple podcasts spotify amazon youtube like they're all getting much more intelligent about finding people the content they're looking for and so i'm always telling people like right now is the best time there's ever been to get into podcasting really on either side of the mic as a guest or a host like just getting involved in it somehow some way right now is a really really great time for it and ryan you just talked about how to do it in a very, very simple way that you can basically yeah. get started as soon as going back to what we said initially, as soon as you know the value, the value prop that yes. you have, right? How you're going yeah. to serve. Once you know that, you can you can start going at 100 miles an hour whenever you're ready. Absolutely. Uh, Alex, uh, thank you so much for being on today. This, this, this has been an amazing conversation just about podcasting in general that I'm sure our audience will love. Uh, and this is just kind of two podcasting guys talking about what they went through and what they found through podcasting. We're, we, we are here because we went through the experience to be here. Uh, we're, we're not trying to tell you what to do. We're just trying to pass along some experience to you because your experiences are going to be different. Your budgets are going to be different. What you find value in is going to be different. But there's some commonalities that everybody that sets down after they do a podcast has done them uh, finds, and that's the networking, the business growth, the the just feeling accomplishment, uh, getting their name out there, getting heard, being in a very visual place. Um, it, it's one of those things that I am so glad it was a weird way to get here, but we got here and, uh, we all have our own stories of how we got into podcasting and why we're here. So what I implore you audience, go out and make your own story. I promise you with podcasting and some dedication, if you go make your own story about how you got into podcasting, it, it will definitely be worthwhile. You, you will have some value in there somewhere. 
Uh, once again, Alex, thank you so much for being on here. Is there anything you want to leave our listeners with? Man, I, I love what you just said, Ryan. Um, talking about like getting out there, get that story out there, find that story, right? Like that's really what it's about. It's about all of us being able to find that story within us and how it's going to share and add value to others. Or if you're the host and you're interviewing guests, it's helping them draw out that story in a way that will serve somebody else. Uh, for me, yeah. once again, I, I'll say is I owe my ability to speak well to podcasting. That's why yes. I can articulate what it is I'm feeling, thinking from a business or personal standpoint. Like I'm just able to do that really well. And that's thanks to this, this medium that we have here. So Ryan, I love what you said there. I think that's great advice to end with. And of course, thank you so, so much for having me. I love what you're doing with Small Business Chronicles and just uh, Titan Digital is such an amazing company. So I just honored to be here today, man. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it. And you mentioned a podcast. How do we find your podcast? Yeah, my show is all about podcasting. So it's called Podcasting Made Simple. So look up Podcasting Made Simple anywhere you like to get podcasts and, and you'll find me. Absolutely. And and go listen to it. I checked out a handful of episodes before I had them on and just an amazing thing to help you on your journey to go make your own story. Uh, once again, this is Ryan Shear with Small Business Chronicles. All this is brought to you by Titan Digital. Um, and we're a full service marketing company. If you need marketing, call us. Uh, the, the, the more you buy from Titan, the more you get to babble into the microphone. And uh, I get to keep this gig. And that's really important to me. Uh, so um, thank you all so much. Until the next episode, take care of each other. <laughs>